Challenge Mode Chambers of Zarek is genuinely one of the toughest pieces of content in the game, and I had never bothered learning it until recently. I've been speedrunning these on Twitch, and doing so required learning tons of different strategies, which was a lot of fun. They aren't the best for money, and there's typically a moment in every single raid I do where I want to smash something, but learning from mistakes and improving solely over time is one of my favorite things to do in the game. Most of the skill in challenge mode is actually preparing for the falling room and keeping your inventory and banking under control, which is a skill that isn't used too much in the other raids. This video is going to be a bit different from what I typically do. Instead of making a full guide, I wanted to try doing a walkthrough of sorts from my perspective. CMs have by far the highest gear and stat requirements for any raid. Tebow is basically necessary as it is dramatically boosted. Your max hit on Mama Motodile, for example, is 96. Shadow is also incredibly powerful for things like Vanguards, Vespula Portal, Mystics, and Ulm. These also require a handful of items that are really only used here and are very valuable. Inquisitor's Armor and Mace and Harmonized Nightmare Staff for Ice Demon. Not only that, the stat requirements of various non-combat stats are through the roof to run these as well. 95 thieving is needed to be able to receive 3 grubs from the chest, and there are various setups that use a thieving cape for boosting level to 100 to get potential for 4 grubs. 96 woodcutting is needed for a chance at 8 kindling from ice demon, 99 is preferred for speeding up mud idol tree, finally you also want as high a mining level as possible. In the setup I run you need 99 mining or you lose a max hit. Not to mention you also need an absurd amount of purple sweets to actually be competitive. Yeet more sweets in a solo CM than a solo tob. It's fair to say these are incredibly imposing for the majority of players. You do actually pay for those sweets with the drops received with some profit on the side, but if you're running these, you are definitely not doing it for the GP. I run the Surge Thrall setup. What this means is that we run the standard spellbook up through Ice Demon and then use Max Cape, or Mage Cape, that also works, to swap to Thralls after that. This is by far the fastest setup and means at most, I can run five CMs a day. If only Jagex would give Grandmasters of Combat achievements some kind of bonus to cape swaps. Nah, it's impossible. I typically do them a few hours on stream and then do something else. CMs always have the exact same layout and they always start with everybody's favorite boss, Tecton. In a speed run, you go for a one anvil Tecton. This is not incredibly rare. I've heard it's a one in four chance on two landed hammers but will require a lot of resetting regardless. I typically figure around 10 to 20 minutes of Tecton before you actually get a run going. I run into the raid on a specific tick to get Tecton off the anvil as fast as possible, cast vulnerability at him as he moves towards me, which drains his defense by 10%, then hammer twice and do a specific attack pattern to get maximum hits before he returns to the anvil. Repeat when he gets off the anvil and hope he dies. Tecton is effectively the lobby before the raid, all of the Tecton chatting happens here, and only here. Finally, past Tecton, I move on to the hardest room in the entire raid, the Crabs Room. I joke, this room isn't actually hard, but the Crabs can absolutely scam you and force you right back to Tecton chatting. Waiting a tick before the loading zone at the Crystal is huge for making Crabs the same each time. Beyond that, it's just following an exact set of attacks. Crabs took me a surprisingly long time to learn, and I still mess them up sometimes. Of course, I tanked Avenge on Tecton, so I spam as many sweets as possible here to recover HP. On to the Ice Demon. Drop two potions, equip my axe, drop my tinderbox, deposit everything, and get chopping. You can move between the chop ticks. Chopping is a five tick action. This allows you to reduce the chance of chopping the tree closest to the bank by spreading out the chops. Really, there isn't much to this room. It's more so about banking skills and inventory management. Once I dump for the third time, I drop the tinderbox and remove the axe, placing it back where it was in my inventory. This keeps my inventory exactly as it was. I bank as many items as I can for vanguards, and, you know, bank my scythe on accident, absolutely genius, and go back to grab my potions. Overload, spam sweets, hammer ice demon. Hammer on ice demon works differently and actually does increase your magic accuracy, so missing hammer can a lot of times be the difference between continuing or resetting right here. If it's before the five minute mark, as I kill Ice Demon, I swap spellbooks here and move on to Shamans. Shamans is one of the easiest rooms. It's literally just move three tiles every time you see that attack animation. I flick Rigor so I have enough prayer to get through vanguards with just that enhance. 
It's really all bow RNG, so just hope you hit big and move on. I'm typically looking for around 6 minutes down to the next floor. It's extremely important to sweet as much as possible as you run because with this setup you don't get a brew for vanguards. I try to get at least 80 HP by vanguards. Vanguards is probably the hardest room of the entire raid, besides Ulm, and a lot of the time you just need to chance a reset or death for the sake of speed. Resetting their health or dying here is typically a reset. There's loads of nuance to this room. You always get three attacks at the start. I start by sending a cast at the melee vanguard. If it's big, I switch to bowing the mage, and if that's big, I'll swap bow to accurate and send a shot at the ranger. And then they all immediately go down right after that. After this, as a rule of thumb, I follow the ranged vanguard always, scythe it to below 70 HP, making sure to swap to Missouri as I swing for the added defense, and step underneath it after switching to ranging the mage vanguard. Once I see a big shot, I switch to mage and start attacking the melee vanguard. At this point, it's flick both vanguards and hope you live until they go down, repeating the process. This attack order reduces the total damage taken and always gives you something to attack. An asterisk on the plugin indicates I can kill that vanguard once the others are low enough, and then I take them out. The supplies you get from these are completely random, the worst being three brews and no revite. I chug the enhance, grab Kodai, and any brews and resources that are dropped, moving on to thieving. Thieving is a skill-based room. 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 We don't care about bats. I dump after I've collected about 15 grubs and try to keep the creature eating as he can regenerate health if he isn't. After you've dumped 30 total grubs, the room is done. The only real skill in this room is banking properly after you've completed it. I bank Harmstaff, Tome, Hammer, Scythe, Max Cape, and Stamina after I've taken a sip out of it. Pulling out Axe, P-Neck, Avernic, Pickaxe, Mace, Two Brews, and a Kodai. If I got more than one revite at Vanguards, I take any extra just for Vespula. As I run to Vespula, I do some checks, removing boots, my staff is on long range, my inventory is properly sorted, and I've drunk Kodai for the mage boost. The enhanced timer is something I basically just stare at the entire kill. Enhance gives you a prayer point every six ticks, and knowing when that prayer point will be given allows the least tick waste possible. I'll sometimes elect to run in without prayer and use redemption on the way back if it saves ticks. There's a surprising amount of nuance to what looks like just running back and forth here. The instant you kill Vespula, tightrope basically begins. I need to be prepared for the Kirby skip as I get there, and I only have while I'm running to the rope to do that. I pick up the potions Vespula drops, swapping into melee gear to hold it all, and activate rapid heal before my true tile passes this tile. Clicking to this tile before the entrance is actually important too. This gets you to rope a tick faster and dodges the loading line at Vasa. I use a combination of brews and sweets to get my HP just barely over 50 as fast as possible, and then immediately overload to get to 1, 2, or 3 HP. This all needs to be done before getting to the rope, or the run is over. Because sweets heal a random amount of HP, sometimes the RNG of that can screw you over, as it almost did in this run. Get to the rope, activate redemption before or as you cross. Redemption heals enough to survive the barrage of damage we receive. Grab the crystal, click the rope, click sweet to ticky and equip necklace while clicking the rope to cross back. If you did everything right, the necklace will null all the damage received on the way back, and we can continue on. It's actually fairly easy to pull off with some practice, but if you mess up, the run is completely done. This actually took me a while to learn, and the main reason I kept messing up was I was eating the sweet and equipping the necklace before clicking to the rope, which luckily I had someone in the chat point out. I'll leave Kirby's guide to this below. How you pull this off changes if you have 2 or 3 HP as well. Once the skip is done, we move on to the final floor. I'm looking for like a sub 13 minutes at the hole. My best ever was just barely sub 12. The last floor is a killer. Every single room at this point has a huge amount of RNG that can just simply end the run. Guardians is the only easy room on the floor. You can summon the meme skeleton thrall to potentially save a tick, overkilling the second guardian. People always question my funny walk, but I really do think this is superior to the typical running two tile method. The main reason I do this is to flick prayers more easily, which is really important if you don't get a revite drop like in this run. It also requires less clicks and no timing, but at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter much. If I'm in my Blood Fury setup, I try to take damage if it happens to heal me to 99, since I'm not going to be venging Vasa. He takes all your health away anyway, so it's better to be lower HP to allow sweets to get HP higher. 
After the Guardian dies, I equip Mace, set it to Spike for stabbing crystals, equip Claws, then equip my range setup to get all my switches in the right order. Boss requires very fast switches to not lose ticks and is a fairly difficult room execution-wise. When Vasa teleports me, I eat three sweets and drink a brew if my overload will restore my stats, spam clicking to do a shot without rigor. Avoiding damage from Vasa's boulders is really just understanding your bow's cooldown. Moving right before you can shoot again will avoid all the damage. Do one final shot, switch to Claws, double spec Crystal, if it's not dead yet, mace it until it is, and switch back to Tebow. A good Vasa is dead before it reaches the second Crystal. You easily have the potential for a two minute plus Vasa with bad bow RNG, ending the run. A little trick a lot of people don't know, if you have to run through Vasa, you pray melee to reduce the trample damage. Once Vasa is dead, I finish off the Enhance, equipping Mace and Avernic in order to pick up two brews and a Twisted. When I enter Mystics, because Vasa was so slow, I overload while luring the first Mystic and instantly die. When I enter Mystics, I pick up the potions for my body and lure the Mystic to this safe spot to reduce damage. You can equip Missouri while stepping out to further reduce damage. Because Shadow multiplies Occult's bonus but not Salve's, it actually is far better not to use Salve at all anymore. After the first Mystic dies, I run through the other two and lure them into melee mode, ideally close to the door. Shadow has the potential to noodle a lot here, which can, again, end the run. There's a setup for Tendril Skip here that involves waiting a tick before the room to run past the Tendrils a bit faster. I had to eyeball it here since I was really far away. I typically chug a whole brew and a dose of Revite as I enter the next room while equipping all my tank gear and staff. Now, I've said in the past that Mudadile is the worst boss in the game, and would you believe it, that hasn't changed. The strategy for this room is running up to the meat tree and attempting to chop it down while sending casts at the baby Mudadile until it is around sub 50% HP. The combined max hit of an off prey ranged attack from the baby and magic attack from Mama Mudadile means you can potentially be hit 89 damage in a single game tick. Hilarious! Not to mention burning through all your brews in this room can mean the difference between having two brews for Ulm or six brews. And it's all completely random. Joy oh joy! Why do they attack so frequently there? They're um, doing a coin toss between. <laughs> Once I've got that tree top down, I equip full mage gear and summon a thrall. Doing this walk under method with Missouri flicks can help reduce damage, but really it just increases your odds of survival. Nothing more than that. Once the baby is dead, I grab that overload and enhance and run over to the safe spot while trying not to forget there's a loading line here. Mama Badadao maxes 38 with any given attack, so technically, even if you are constantly brewing, if she maxes each attack, she can just kill you anyways. <laughs> uh, I typically brew twisted until I'm running low on brew, then start sweet tick eating every single attack. When one of us finally falls over, I run over and grab brew and revite, and then move on to the final challenge. When I'm running up to the chest, I eat as many sweets as possible, drop the axe and spare overload, make sure I'm enhanced, sort my inventory for banking. This actually took a ton of practice to get relatively fast at. I would sometimes waste 20 to 30 seconds at the bank while learning. Finally, I run into Ulm. If it's pacing sub 2830, I'll get there in sub 20 minutes on the clock. Ulm is by far the hardest part of the raid and requires a lot of practice and experience to get good at. When I first started, I had a very basic understanding of 4 to 1, and I sometimes still struggle a bit with it. Not to mention I had no clue how to do Shadow Mage handwriting. Cinderous Guide helped me a ton, which I'll leave below. I might make a basic Shadow Running Guide in the future, since there really isn't a good one yet, as far as I know. Although I have heard that Kirby is slowly working on a guide for this of his own. So if that exists in the future, I'll make sure to put that down below as well. The basic overview for Ulm is if you hit hammers, it's usually okay. If not, you waste a ton of brew, and he just never dies. There's usually about two minutes of variation, and the majority of that is hammer RNG. I try to brew every 15 seconds whenever possible to keep my stats high, and keep HP as high as possible, since I don't have a saying to rely on to heal myself back up. Masori flicking in 4 to 1 I learned also helps reduce a lot of damage. I learned things like acid running, flame wall nulling, and crystal running with some practice. The P3 hand trolls have always been hilarious too, Pacing into head phase, but not being able to do one damage with Lance in five hits is enough to make most people's mental give out. Please don't heal. <sighs> Please don't. Hit the fucking head! Hit it! 
it! Hit it! Are you serious? What? After the raid, I always try to remember that purples don't exist. My goal is to get a good time and not pay for the hundreds of sweets to use that raid. Go on to the next run and cool off with some Tecton chatting. If you're watching this as it goes up, I will be sending more CM speeds on my Twitch channel. I'm still three seconds off a of sub 2830, so come check it out and do some Tecton chatting with me. And that's it for the video. Leave a like if you liked it and or subscribe. Thanks guys.